My subject of today is human dignity, algorithm, and the rule of law, some reflections. Men, free and equal in rights from birth, as it is expressed in Article 1 of the French Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, organize themselves into a community in order to survive, to continue to secure their lives, and to fulfill the tasks of the community. Through this union into a community, people limit their freedom themselves by creating a sovereignty, a public power of the community. For this purpose, institutions are established, the institutional organization of the community existence takes place. This institutional aspect is complemented by an instrumental aspect. Norms are created, laws that claim binding force within the hierarchy of norms of the legal order. Only in this way is the necessary stability of the community achieved, which requires not only the binding nature of norms, but also the establishment of a basic order that is supreme in the legal order, that is the creation of a constitution. The union to the community takes place by a contract. Only it corresponds to the starting point, that is the fundamental freedom of the uniting people. This contract, a social contract, contrat social, is the constitution. This contract has an organizational objective. It establishes the legal order and necessarily at the same time also the objective of maintaining the freedom of man in a community-related and community-bound form, as the German Federal Constitutional Court calls it when characterizing the image of human being of the German basic law. This second objective is the objective of the value orientation of the community. The central value of the community is the human dignity, which is inseparably connected with the principle of the principle of the freedom of the individual. Human dignity is absolute, freedom is relative. It is necessarily restrictable in favor of the freedom of other members of the community. The third basic value of the triad of values in the community is equality, which results from the fact of being human. The relation of man and community, characterized by these values, is realized by law. Law expresses itself in the fundamental order of the Constitution, but also in legislation, that is, in politics, which, with the majority, transforms its will in legislation, in law. The power to legislate can be transferred to the executive, but only under restrictive conditions. Their task, in the sense of the classical separation of powers, is the application of the laws. Enacting law and applying law, both of which must be in accordance with values related to human beings, that is, including human dignity. Can conflict arise here if the state uses algorithm instead of human decision-making? Algorithm can be used for the enactment of laws, for the execution of administrative actions, such as the issuing of tax assessments, and also for judicial acts. Can algorithms be used even to acts of the state that are discretionary decisions? A number of questions arise which we want to consider from the point of view of the central value of the community order human dignity. This issue has not been frequently studied so far, but it is increasingly being addressed, for example, in Germany by Sebastian Golla in the ÖV, the Öffentliche Verwaltung 2019. This fundamental issue, which has legal and meta-legal aspects, will be addressed here in the brevity required for this short paper, rather as raising questions than as presenting ready-made answers. 
Finding adequate solutions will take time and further practical experience in this field. The human being, <clears throat> his, her protection and promotion is the ultimate goal of law. As Gustav Radbruch emphasizes, the idea of law is focused on man. It is anthropocentric. The value of the human being is connected with its existence and is an anthropological axiom. The human, be human being as a value in itself is a value in itself and has its purpose in itself, as Immanuel Kant puts it. It must never be made an instrument for another purpose lying outside. Its quality as a subject prevents public and also private power from making the human being an object. This does not mean that man cannot be an addressee of obligations, of commandments and prohibitions on the part of the state, or that it cannot subject itself to such obligations by contract with private persons. The addressee quality does not make himself or herself an object, as long as the obligation imposed by the community, by the state, recognizes his, her freedom as a principle and is necessary for a legitimate community interest and individual bearable that is proportionate and also does not touch the essence of his, her freedom of the fundamental rights. The use of algorithms finds its limit in the constitutional order, an absolute limit in the guarantee of human dignity, which is not an open concept as is occasionally suggested in the literature. Compare uh, Gola in this uh, cited uh, work. That is not an open concept uh, dignity is not an open concept that adapts to technological process without restriction. Human dignity is not subject to technology, not subject to the machine. Certainly, an all-encompassing definition of human dignity is difficult. The definitional delimitation may vary to a certain extent in the subjective perception according to time, region, cultural culture general understanding, etc. It is subject to influences of the political, economic, cultural and technological environment. Nevertheless, the functional core of human dignity is fixed and not variable. The algorithm is a machine. Its actions are not human actions arising from human deliberation, evaluation and decision. Is a human being negated as a subject, as a value in itself, when algorithms are used? Does man have a right to direct communication with other human beings in matters that affect him, her, substantially, which burden and limit him or her? One could say that when algorithms are used, humans communicate with other humans or in terms of the law with the public authority composed of humans only to the extent that they programmed the machine. Thus, the other humans initiate responses in generalized form, determine the category of the response via programming. The communicative intervention is anticipated by the creator of the machine, that is the algorithm. The machine mediates, mediatizes the other individual. The anticipation of communication through the determination of an algorithm does not make the algorithm addressee as such an object. object. If the algorithm response is reasonably determined, the algorithm bases its response on empirical values. If these are sufficiently determined, and makes the algorithm response sufficiently determined itself, this is ultimately unobjectionable for our question.
Two important questions arise. The first is whether a full or partial use of algorithm can yield a factually correct decision with certainty or high prob probability. According to the construction of the basic law of our German constitution, the factually correct decision is the constitutionally flawless subsumption under a constitutionally compliant piece of legislation. In this context, relatively unambiguous terms are to be identified. Indeterminate legal terms are to be fleshed out. They are to be interpreted with due regard for the Constitution. And this is to be set in relation to legal consequences provided for by law. The law, an essential product of democracy and demanded by the rule of law, must be explored in its objective will. Can this be done by algorithm trained on empirical values as well as by human cognition? Training on empirical values orients the algorithm to the past, to what has already been thought. This, thus, it cannot bring into the decision what has never been thought before but which is perhaps decisive in the concrete case. It cannot bring in new, in new perceptions, and it can not use the dynamics of a constitution as a living instrument in an updated way for the interpretation. These concerns already apply to determined algorithms. The terrain becomes all the more uncertain in the case of self-learning algorithms that continue to evolve. There is also the question of when the training and adaptation process will be complete. The question of the correctness of an order of public authority produced by means of algorithms is particularly difficult when it is a matter of discretion, which by definition presupposes human evaluation and can probably only be carried out by machine to a very limited extent. Certainly, Subsequent control is necessary, all the more so the less certain the decision-making process itself is. However, it becomes problematic if the algorithm develops itself. Then the human communication, which is indispensable for subjectivity and which must exist at least in the indirect form of anticipated human determination, is omitted. The individual concerned must also be able to understand the public decision. The frequent call for transparency of algorithm is of little help here. Knowing the source code is not helpful for non-experts, that is for the majority of the addressees. The problem of understanding is exacerbated when it comes to self-learning algorithms. It is necessary that the addressee understands the algorithm-based decision of the public authority. Not to understand means to be emotionally at the mercy. This makes the human being an object and is not acceptable for him, her, unless it is a matter of clear automatic consequences, like the sequence of traffic lights after a fixed period of time, or other simple automatic processes and the like, which Gola, Sebastian Gola also points out in his treatise quoted above. An incriminating decision requires justification. It must be understood. Rule of law requires this. Rule of law must not be replaced by the rule of the machine. Without understanding the meaning, the process of origin and the reason of an incriminating decision of public authority, or understanding it only inadequately, the constitutionality, constitutionally provided guarantee of effective legal protection is also rendered void. This is because the judge, like the addressee, cannot understand the decision-making process, or at least cannot understand it sufficiently and thus cannot review it. We can see many open questions which must be reflected on and answered on the basis of 
is a discussion between lawyers and technical experts. This is an indispensable requirement of the rule of law. Thank you very much for your attention.